NASA is currently hiring 24 theologians to participate in its program at Princeton University that convenes theologians, scientists, scholars, and policymakers alike to assess how the public would react to alien life on other planets. According to Cambridge priest and theologian Dr. Andrew Davidson, who will be one of the 24 hired, we are getting closer to finding life on other planets and says, quote, non-religious people also seem to overestimate the challenges that religious people would experience if faced with evidence of alien life. While self-identified Christians make up 63 percent of the U.S. population in 2021, the Pew Research Center found that's down from 75 percent a decade ago. The move follows a recently unveiled defense legislation that would require teams of Pentagon and intelligence community experts to rapidly respond to military UFO sightings and conduct field investigations. Uh, so this is pretty interesting. I've always thought that this is one of the reasons, you know, people's belief in religion was one of the reasons why the government uh, never would talk about possible life on on other planets for the longest time, just because religion is a great means of controlling populations, uh, keeping people in line. There's a lot of legislation that's that's based around religious belief. So kind of interesting that now, I mean, I don't know how people would react. Well, capitalism is doing a good enough job controlling populations now that you can probably let it let in the 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 kind of uh, the idea of uh, alien life and it, uh, wh whether or not it uh, leads to Christianity crumbling or not it doesn't have any implication for the control of the, the population but I think what the guy's saying is is right that that it would not be hard I think to kind of absorb into a a, a Christian theology the idea of extra life that will certainly not be hard to uh, absorb into a capitalist theology, theology being the wrong word here, of uh, alien life. We'll trade it's with more them. Consumers. We'll, yeah. we'll trade with them. Uh, there will be an exchange of technology. <laughs> and, uh, we'll go to war with them. If we, well, that right, would not be part war. of capitalism. We don't want no, to go to war with people in capitalism. Yeah, that's yeah, not, yes, that's it would. Not. It would be definitely mm -hmm. part of capitalism. There's a lot of money in war. The not industry. more in trading. No, K killing people and blowing things up is economically wasteful. We we don't want to do that. We want uh, uh, countries with McDonald's don't go to war with each other. This is a plainly developed. Uh... <laughs> well, that, that, that is that is a slogan. But yes, but uh, I think I think Len, I think Len, Lenin's essay on kind of capitalism and imperialism would apply to other planets. As, as well, I mean, that, there's plenty of that capitalism just has to kind of expand. Yes, the famously non-war making markets. Soviet Union. Yes, no, they, <laughs> I mean they they were not as expansionist as as the as the uh, capitalist countries were. Like I mean, if you if you think about the the communist sphere, but either China or USSR versus. The U.S. and Europe, which which driven by capitalism, which which one of those two well, I, ideologies I, pushed beyond its I, borders? More? I would I would disagree that it's driven by capitalism. I mean, I I would encourage our countries to be more capitalist, but like capitalism involves not initiating force against other people, but trading well, with them voluntarily. It's so like, if literally, if you're doing this, you're not doing. It's capitalism. driven by a need to keep a high rate of return. Like that's well, we that's we the don't impulse. Know. We don't know if the aliens are capitalists, first of all. But secondly, I mean, we if they were the ones, if they were the ones showing up here, my guess is we're not the imperialists in this in this particular scenario. We're not the ones able to, to jump on ships. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It would be the other way around. So, um, but meanwhile, NASA's James Webb Telescope successfully launched into orbit on Christmas Day after 30 years of developments and delays. According to NASA, the initiative is, revolu is a revolutionary flagship mission to seek the light from the first galaxies in the early universe and to explore our own solar system, as well as planets orbiting other stars called exoplanets. Here's the trailer for that. We have uncovered wonders undreamt by our ancestors who first speculated on the nature of those wandering lights in the night sky. We've crossed the solar system and sent ships to the stars. But we continue to search. We can't help it essential element of the human future lies far beyond the earth
If we crave some cosmic purpose, then let us find ourselves a worthy goal. Hmm. Looks pretty wonder, cool. I wonder, is, is, it a, is it a coincidence that we're talking about all of this kind of space exploration and, and, and kind of whether or not there are, are aliens at a time when kind of the expansion of the U.S. project has finally been foreclosed? You know, like, you know, for the, throughout the whole 19th century, you're expanding to the West. Through the 20th century, you're expanding around, around the globe. Then, you know, through the 1990s, 2000s, you've got bubble after bubble after bubble. And so you always have kind of an outlet for the, the middle class anger at the bad deal that we've got here. And the outlet is, well, you know, it used to be, well, you can go West, young man. Then, then it's, uh, you know, then it's like, look, we're going to buy you off with rising living standards that come, come from, from this kind of quasi-imperial project. Then it's like, oh, hey, we've got a tech bubble for you. Then it's like, hey, we've got a real estate bubble for you. All of that's crashing. So we need something else to offer people. So this seems like a kind of the system lunging at something else to offer people. Eh, I don't know. People naturally look to the stars and wonder, right, and have done that for thousands and thousands of years, as far as we know. Um, for sure. Yeah. yeah. It's a, well, it's an I interesting think question. Yeah, the government would have to play nicer with Elon Musk if that's their goal, <laughs> so that he could, you know, maybe colonize Mars, and then we can start shipping people off to is sort of like homesteading uh, right. of the red planet. Um, but, you know, it, 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 I, I definitely think that, you know, with the expansion of Space Force and, you know, and, and then there's this releasing of the documents of the unidentified, what are they calling them? They're not UFOs. What, are, what is the, ter the term the government's using UAPs. for them? UAPs. Yeah, yeah, right. So uh, unidentified aerial, what is it? What does it stand Phenomena. for? Phenomena. Yeah, oh, yeah, right. So I, mean, I think people have a rationally difficult job getting past the idea that, we could be alone, that in the entire universe and all that, all that, all those planets, everything, that it's just us. There's only life in this one little rock. It's in virtually this impossible. Infinite, it seems hard, it's hard to accept. And so we, and so we go looking, but. Are but, you hmm. accepting it yet, Robbie? Because I think you're the, you're the bigger skeptic. <laughs> I am the bigger skeptic. I think there's, well, yeah, a bunch of sightings of various phenomena don't uh, really convince me otherwise. But, what about uh, that trailer we just watched and all of that space? Ooh. I mean, come on. That's a government commercial. Oh, oh. I couldn't be less excited about it if I tried. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> cool. Well, thanks, folks. And we will have more rising right after this.